Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, we've got, I'm going to say, like, the rainmaker, right? Wouldn't it be great if we could just have somebody on the, on the show that could just make it rain, bring us leads, help us with our marketing, make it evergreen so it's a one-time set-it-and-forget-it system? That would be a dream. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss. If I didn't properly introduce my co-host, you know him, you love him, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Because you know what I want more of? What? You ever see the movie Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? Leads. You want the leads. It's all about the leads. The so our book? guest today, what's that? Isn't the phone book the leads? <laughs> the phone book is not the leads anymore. That's in the 80s. Okay. Our guest today is Trevor Mock from Carrot.com. Now, you probably know Carrot. You probably know Trevor, but I'll just introduce him anyways. He uh, has been investing in in real estate for many many years he's done to the tune of eighty four thousand plus real estate related leads and counting with his team uh he leads the care team and focuses on helping members get the results they want uh and is just kind of a, a rock star uh you know real estate entrepreneur in the sense that if you go to carrot.com um it's just amazing what they're doing so trevor welcome and just to just start, can you kind of give us an overview of all the things Carrot can do? Mark, uh, man, thanks for having me back. And Todd, <clears throat> great to meet you as well, man. And um, dude, I, I, I think the biggest thing is, is this. And right before we, we hit record on here, <clears throat> I had mentioned, man, that the, the big kick that I've been on the last year, the last two years <clears throat> is helping people get off of what I call hamster wheel marketing. And we can talk about that a little bit, whether you're a house flipper or a land flipper or a real estate agent, doesn't matter getting off the hamster wheel marketing train and onto what I call evergreen marketing, marketing that you do one time and then it works for months and years. And so <clears throat> that's the main thing, man. We help a lot of real estate investors, whether they're house flippers, wholesalers, land investors, note investors, rent to own, subject to uh, even real estate agents generate a lot more leads online, evergreen leads online. Um, <clears throat> and we help you guys get more freedom back in your business. That, that's ultimately why I keep showing up to work, Mark is uh you know people ask me it's like why do you keep building carrot you know we have 40 full-time employees here now which a lot of people didn't realize and there's been lots of opportunities to make some sort of exit but i'm like dude i'm passionate about what i do and we get to help people build businesses that unlock freedom for them and uh, help them make an impact in their local communities all right fantastic well trevor i'm gonna give you the toughest question and probably <laughs> of, of the day because yeah, it's gonna go back into a glenn gary glenn ross reference yep the leads are weak. Yep. How do we know the leads are going to be strong? Because a lead's a lead. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, let's just pick on Scott Todd. Yep. Right. And he's like, Mark, I got like these 10 great leads for you. Well, all 10 of them are tire kickers. Mm. So I go back to Scott. I said, Scott, the leads are weak. And what does Scott say to me? Mark, you're weak. <laughs> I closed off 10 of those people. So is it Mark or is it the leads? How do we, how do you make sure that the system gives us quality leads and not quantity leads? Mark, that, dude, that's an awesome question. So <clears throat> the, the first thing I like to do is I always like to look at, you know, how, number one, how did that lead get to you, right? What, what's the motivation level? How do they see your ad or do they see your direct mail piece or wh whatever it is as a land investor? And oftentimes you'll see real estate investors out there uh, doing you know, out, outbound marketing, which works amazingly well, especially for land, right? One of the best ways to activate demand is with direct mail, because a lot of those people don't really know exactly uh, wh how to sell a piece of property that's in the middle of nowhere or whatever it is. And so direct mail helps to activate that demand. Um, but oftentimes the people who are searching, actively searching for a solution are the most motivated. Right. So let's say someone's flipping through a, a he's flipping through Facebook. They're looking at their grandma's apple pie she made or whatever. And then they see they see someone's ad in there that distracts them and says, hey, do you have a piece of land or do you have a house to sell or whatever it is? They click the link. They go to the website. Uh, Facebook can be a good a good source for that. But the problem is 
someone's in a state where they're exploring, they're in entertainment mode, they're not in solution mode, right? And so with, fa with Facebook leads, we find whether it's land or houses, we find that you're gonna have to get a much higher volume of leads. And I can show you guys real data and stats also inside of our analytics where we get about 80,000 leads a month right now uh, with our, our clients. A lot of them are seller leads too, or for uh, most are seller leads, but a lot of them are land leads. Where sure. it shows whether it's a Facebook lead or Google ad or you know anything like that, they usually convert about half as well as an organic lead. And I'll tell you what you know what what where that motivation comes in. So now let's say that person is now not on Facebook. The next day that pain point hits them. They're like, I've got this piece of land. The property tax bill is coming up. I don't want to have to write that check for it again. Let me go to Google and start to search for someone who can maybe buy this from me. Because I talked to my real estate agent and they said that they're not going to take it on because it's just not something they can handle. And so they type in sell my land or sell my land fast or sell landlock land in Oregon or whatever it is. And while the, while the, the volume isn't there, okay, you're going you're gonna to activate a lot more sellers of land with your direct mail, uh, but the, the motivation is there. You're going to have such a higher level of motivation where your close rate is going to be two, three, four, five times higher on those types of leads than uh, any outbound marketing. And so it, it's a good kind of one two, one, two mix. You've got to have a good mix of the activation, you know, the outbound marketing that activates demand. That's where you're going to get your volume, where you're going to get your highest margins and your, your most motivated prospects from inbound, where people are actively searching out a solution. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, yeah, like I've, um, uh, so like I've, I've done some tech, like, uh, look, I'm not, I'm not disputing what you're saying. I'm just saying like in my own experience, right? Like I've done tests and when I get somebody that is, is Googling, like sell my land or they come to me and they go, Hey, I see you sell a lot of land in the area. Would you like to buy mine? Well, then all of a sudden I got to put on my appraiser cap, right? Mm, so like yep. now all of a sudden. Yep. I got to go in there and figure out, is this something I normally buy or not? And then I got to like, think about it because like for my own business, the way I work is I work in kind of like, I literally in one County, my, my number one County, I probably work in an area that's about 50,000 uh, acres, mm, acres yeah. large. Right. So like, that's where I go. So it is like a, almost like a niche, if you will, but essentially I wouldn't buy like any piece of property in that area. So now, now I'm sorting. Yep. Right. Like I'm filtering out this stuff. And, you know, to me, it seems like a waste of time because, yes, because i am got this inbound traffic, it doesn't they might be more motivated. But I'm telling you, like in my own experience, when they call me and say, do you want to buy my land? And I say yes. And they say how much? And I tell them. And then they go and they're looking at what I, I like I, th that I'm selling the land for in that yep. area. They're like, no, right? Yep. So I don't close as much. So like, how do, how do we close the gap between like my own experience and then what you're saying? Where's, yeah. Where am I missing it? No, that's, that's great. It's a great question, Scott. So <clears throat> one of the things that we found with, with our stuff, and I can show you guys stats, I can show you guys data and leads that are, that, that are coming in. There's a couple things. So number one, like you were saying, oftentimes those are different sellers, right? Because the people who are getting activi activated by direct mail, they may not be searching and, and they, they might may not even know that they could sell it. Uh, like I said, they, they might have that property tax bill coming up and it's an opportunist, opportunistic thing. Hey, this person is right in front of me. They're wanting to buy the property. 5,000 is better than nothing or you know, whatever the price is. And so it's an amazing thing, especially for land. Um, if there's people on here that are, that are listening that are also house flippers, <clears throat> houses are a little bit different because there, there's a, a better, faster, easier market for selling a house where someone, everyone knows the local real estate agent is likely going to be able to help me or I can, you know, now there's I buyers that are buying houses or I can do the search. So I could sell my house fast, insert whatever. Um, and we have lots of data behind the house side of it as far as um, uh, visitor to lead converts about double and then uh, lead to conversion converts about double for inbound organic versus outbound. And here's the reasons why. And this is where honestly, this is where all this is where I'll fall on my sword a little bit, too, is we have a lot more house data than we do have land data. So you guys have so much land experience and we can kind of bring our house experience into it as well and say, hey, where are there opportunities to bring what we know works with houses over to make it work better with land and vice versa. But on the house side of things, if someone is actively searching out a solution and then they know that there's likely some different options, one of the things that's on their mind is number one, is this person reputable? You know, are, are they actually a buyer? Are they actually someone who's going to 
going to help serve me? Are they actually someone who's, who's trustworthy, incredible, or are they someone who's just going to scam me? I uh, have other people worked with them in the past that have had success with them. Or are they, you know, are they someone that I should want to work with? And that's where we find when someone lands on a well done website or what we call an authority hub, uh, where it has good testimonials, good credibility, it shows transactions you've done, it shows the person who had the same skepticisms or roadblocks or objections that they have, uh, and you were able to surmount them. And there's a video testimonial, or there's a written testimonial. Uh, that's where when someone lands in these websites, it drastically increases the conversion of, of that lead. Now, uh, if I talk to a, a land investor and they have a normal website, like a lot of people do, where it's just, hey, let me take your information. There might be a little bit of uh, information about us, but we're kind of you know, not putting ourselves out there a ton. There's not a lot of good credibility out there. Then that's where you are going to see your close rates suffer in the back end because you're not standing out from others. I can show you some examples that, that are working really well. Uh, to close these land leads and on average what we see uh you know just this from a smaller sample size we have about eight thousand clients uh, of those who are land investors specifically you know probably sub 300 probably sub 400 uh, that's a guess um <clears throat> but what we find from those those that we're surveying is about one in ten of those land leads turns into a deal uh, that they end up purchasing through the organic side of it um the direct mail side of it, if you're talking houses, it's usually one in 20 to one in 40 leads through direct mail turns into a deal. And on the organic side, you know, it's one in 10 to one in 15. Uh, are, are, what, what, what kind of numbers do you guys see on the direct mail side uh, on the land uh, side of it? How many leads turns into a deal usually? Well, well you know, ahead, it, it, I mean, it depends. Like if, if we send out a hundred offers, <laughs> right? We'll, we'll look at it if we've priced it right because we're not sending out blind offers. Yep. So we're sending out actual offers. So if we've priced it right, we're looking at about a three to 5% response rate cool. on that. And then after we do our due diligence, we're probably at about a 1% close rate yep. on that. That's good. That's really good. That's yeah, really good. No, it's good. But Scott, what do you, what would you say? Same, same thing. Same thing. Same yeah. Thing. So that's, that's what we're kind of looking at. Um, yep. But you know, if it's under 3%, then we probably need to raise our, offer and if it's over five percent let's retrade we're probably a little nervous mm -hmm. probably came up a little too high yep for sure and that's one thing i definitely want to tease out as well whether we have time on, on this podcast or 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 in another one is is that there's a couple dynamics with with the internet too right like we were saying especially if it's an older de demographic and if they're not actively searching online uh, those types of people have owned those properties for a long time you know 20 mm -hmm. 30 years plus uh, they may be less apt potentially to be going to Google proactively to search for a solution. And that's where a direct mail you know, piece is going to be amazingly effective. Drop it in front of them because they may not be searching for it. Um, those pieces of land that are owned, let's say, sub 20 years where the person might be uh, might be more tech savvy or they are searching online potentially. That's where kind of that that gap can be filled in there. But I think I think the experience is really it really depends on your own experience. It depends also on kind of like how, how does someone want to grow their company, right? Because one thing that we'll talk a lot with people about, we had Jeff Fassett, he's a, a big land investor down in Arizona. Um, he was on the podcast, he's been up here to our carrot camp. Uh, he does a good number of house flips or um, of land flips down in Arizona. He uses carrot for, for a lot of it. And him and I were talking and, and we were kind of weighing out, like let's map out your goals, Jeff, for the next year. And I think a lot of people, they'll, they'll listen to a podcast and they'll hear X, Y, Z person, you know, flips 10, 15, 20 pieces of land a month, whatever the number is. And then people go into the next year and they'll go, okay, I'm going to set my goals. And I see that that person's doing 10 a month. I'm only doing three a month. Therefore, I must need to also do 10 in order to be, uh, you know, a, a legit land investor. And I think it's really dangerous when we set our goals based on what, what someone else is doing. And where I'm going with, the, with this is this is if direct mail or whatever, whatever marketing source is, is fulfilling exactly the type of business that you need to, to be building. My, my philosophy is you should only be doing that marketing then. Like if, if, if your lifestyle that you're wanting is 100K a year net and you wanna be able to work 10 hours a week and uh, doing direct mail drops every month is gonna get you there, that dude, do that. Just focus on that and don't get too complicated adding in a bunch of other marketing things into the mix unless there's a real reason why at your core that you need to grow the revenue and need to grow the business. Way too many people grow their businesses uh, in a way that, that 
is just chasing the numbers and not chasing purpose and impact. Hey, I, there's a reason I need to do 10 deals a month. There's a reason I need $300,000 a year when they might be just as happy at a buck 50 uh, working 10 to 20 hours a week. So don't add on marketing methods, guys, just because of it. Do it if it helps you reach a specific purpose in your business. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. I mean, Scott, Ty and I are, you know, all about that lifestyle design. Mm -hmm. And if, if anything, it's not that we want more money. It's like, I, I want his skill. Yep. Like, I want to play golf like Scott Todd because he's out there more than me. <laughs> I want to be able to fly a plane because he's got time to get, you know, to fly a plane. Yep. So really, for me, it's more lifestyle mm -hmm. comparison than it is money comparison, yep. which is just as bad, if not worse. Like, oh, what are you doing this weekend, Scott? I'm on the boat and, you know, I'm, and I'm landlocked. But Scott, it's okay. It's not about me and my jealousy. Go ahead and live your, your best life. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I will. I'll, I'll definitely do that. I mean, one of the things, I, what I like that you said, though, is this too, right? Like, and we see this all the time, is someone will hear about a website, okay? Like a, a tool that, that somebody's using. I mean, I always crack up. Like, I remember this one case where uh, some, there's a lot of talk about Airtable, right? Like in yep. real estate, Airtable. Airtable, Air, it's, Airtable's great. But if you don't know how to use Airtable or you don't know what you would use Airtable for, well, then you don't need Airtable. And mm, it's the same way yep. with Zapier. It's the same way with any of the, the little cool tools that somebody else is using. Somebody else is using this. That doesn't mean that you need it Yep. What you need to understand is, okay, this thing is out there. This tool's out there. This like this website's out there that I could use. I'm going to store it over here. I may not know how I can use it. Hmm. I don't need to know everything. I don't need a subscription to it. I just yep. need to know that it's there. Hmm. And then I'm going to continue down my path. And then I'm going to have a problem to solve, right? Yep. Like, I, I, okay, man, I'm not getting in your case, uh, Trevor, like I'm not getting the the leads that I need. I'm yep. not getting the inbound uh, properties that I, I need to be doing or strategically, this is something that I wanna add. So now what can I do, right? So now you hear about this website, you're like, oh, let me go explore this. Does this do what I want it to do? Yes or no. And if yes, then, then use it. But I, I can't tell you how many times someone has come up to me and said, how do you use Airtable? And I'm like, yeah. What do you mean? Right. Like, well, I've spent a hundred hours. I kid, I, this one guy, he told me he spent a hundred hours mm. working with Airtable to build something and he doesn't even know what he's building. And I'm like, well, what problem are you trying to solve? Yep. He's like, I don't know. And I'm like, yep. then what are you doing in Airtable? Because use the tool when you have a problem to solve. It's not like you Dude. just go get a shovel and go, well, I'm going to dig a hole somewhere. I don't know why I need to dig a hole, but everybody else is digging holes. Like yep. grab the shovel when you need to dig the hole. Dude, I'm, I'm so glad you, you, you brought that up because one of the biggest things that I've found with entrepreneurs, especially, especially real estate investors where, um, you know, you, you read the book or you listen to the podcast and then you're like, bam, I want to be a real estate investor. Uh, the, the biggest problem that I see is a lot of people have that analysis paralysis, right? Where they think that just moving and doing activity uh, equals success or equals momentum. And one of the biggest things I want people to realize is that momentum happens when you do the right steps in the right order, not, not doing uh, step number 12 uh, too early. Momentum happens when you do the right steps in the right order with consistency, not just doing movement for movement's sake. And in that example there, Scott, uh, there's, there's so many people that, that, that feel that just doing activity uh, equals progress. And in that case, like a, a CRM is one of the biggest ones that gets brought up with Carrot, right? Hey, what CRM do, I, do we need? And then we dive in and say, hey, awesome. There's a lot of amazing CRMs out there. Uh, first of all, how many leads are you getting right now every single month? They're like, well, I haven't really kicked up marketing yet. I'm just getting, lear I'm, I'm just learning. I said, well, you don't need a CRM that, yeah, a CRM solves the problem of having so many leads that you can't manage them any, any other way. And I say, focus on getting so many leads that you can't manage them on a spreadsheet or on your whiteboard or whatever it is. Get so many leads that you can't manage them and then build a CRM in there to automate or to help you help you with the rest of that. Uh, because the CRM is an amazing tool, but it doesn't do anything if you have a lead a month or 12 leads a month or no leads a month. Uh, on five leads a month, you can pick up the phone and manage those and put them on a darn, darn whiteboard. Uh, we had um, Brian Rockwell, one of, one of our clients. Uh, he mainly flips houses, but he just re recently flipped his first, first piece of land down in Dallas. And he was up here at, at our Carrot Camp event. And uh, his first year, he did about 600K in wholesale fees. 
uh, in a crazy competitive market, all online, like no, no offline marketing. Uh, and everyone was asking like, dude, Brian, how did you, how do you organize your leads? What are you using for your CRM? And he shows a picture of his office. It was literally his whiteboard. He said, I did my entire first year of business. I did 600 K in wholesale fees with no CRM, with a whiteboard and a notepad. And that's what I want people to really realize is, is there's a million tools you can use. There's a million things you could do, but if you get to the fundamentals of land investing, it's finding a, a seller, a person who needs to sell their, their piece of land. And, and Mark and Scott have amazing ways that they teach you guys how to find those sellers. It's number two, knowing how to, how to, how to price that property. And I'm sure you guys in tons of podcasts and, and courses teach people exactly how to price a property very easily. Then once you have a property that you've priced, then and only then do you really need to learn how to, how to, how to figure out the documents and the final negotiation. And so then at that point, you get someone to accept the price. You're like, oh, shoot, you know, let's now get the documents ready to go. Let's do that. And then the last part is once you get that puppy closed and you need to sell it. And so there's really only like four parts there. Um, it was so funny. I got an Instagram message from a, a customer here in Oregon. He closed his first deal. Uh, this was a, a house deal, but he closed his first deal two weeks ago. And he said it was a type of a deal he'd never um, he'd never been on an appointment like this. And he said he wasn't sure how to negotiate it and talk. And what did he do? Uh, he said literally on the drive over to the, the seller, he pulled up a podcast of ours with, I think it was John Martinez, where he mm -hmm. talks about some of the good questions to ask. And uh, he's like, I just listened to John on the way to the thing. And it's like just in time learning. You learn the thing just in time uh, of needing it, not just in case you'll need it someday. Well, I think that's a really good segue because I know everyone listening to this needs to improve their marketing. Mm. And to have the opportunity to have effective marketing, but a set it and forget it evergreen marketing type of funnel, I'd love to hear how you're solving that problem. Dude, I'll, I'll show you. I mean, would I be able to take over a screen share for two minutes? And I think, I think if sure. people can see examples, um, that'll probably be really effective. So if you guys are just listening to the audio part of it, I'll do my best to kind of tell, tell a story in these two or three minutes on, on what, what I'm sharing. Uh, but there's a couple different, couple different things, Mark. So <clears throat> like I said, hamster wheel marketing works amazing. It's where the marketing that you're doing works as long as you're doing it, right? Uh, the direct mail, you've got to do the direct mail drops, cold calling, RVMs, texts, continue doing those. They work amazingly, especially for land. Um, but, but evergreen marketing is trying to plug into that steady stream of people who are already looking for a solution. And it's, it's, it's something that builds momentum when you, you put out a piece of content or you put out that, you know, that, that blog post or that website today, and you end up getting leads for, for months or years, potentially. And so I'll show you a couple examples right here. So, uh, this one here, uh, is house heroes. Uh, if you were to Google a phrase like sell my land, just literally general sell my land, which isn't the most targeted uh, uh, for sure. He takes these leads and he cooperates with other land investors and he sells them or, or co cooperates with business on them. So if you guys want to tap into leads for land and these guys aren't, aren't doing uh, you know, land deals themselves, uh, for the most part, connect with House Heroes and see if you can't buy some of their leads and collab with them. But someone does a Google search, sell my land or sell my land in Florida or sell my landlocked land or you know, whatever it is. There's lots of different phrases that someone could go to Google to type in. And then land, they land on a page like this. So if you are gonna have some sort of a, a landing page for credibility, but also for generating seller or buyer leads, make it crazy simple like this. You know, we buy vacant land, highest cash offers, you know, the, the, that thing, property address, phone, email. Um, and then it's all about credibility from there because one of the biggest things that we found, whether it's a land seller or land buyer or house seller, or house buyer, is credibility is they want to know is this person going to rip me off is this person actually going to follow through with what they had promised and how does the process work because most of these land sellers have never ever sold a piece of land especially online and so it's really valuable to increase that close ratio to build that trust and credibility and walk them through step by step how the process works um, and that's what they do on this page here they show some of the land that they purchased and this page here uh, alone generates hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of leads every single month. I'll pop over here. I think it's right here, actually. So this is House Heroes. This is a lead that came in a few hours ago. Um, but if we were to look at it, guys and gals, I mean, there's leads, four, five, six seller leads coming in every single day uh, for them all across America. But if we were to look at other land sites that are hyper-focused in on one area, it's the same kind of story. You know, sellers, buyers typing in phrases, landing there and looking to sell their piece of land. 
Um, <clears throat> the next thing that I would do, Mark, is set up a land buyer site. And so I'll, sh I'll share this one really fast. Um, if if, if um, direct mail is your primary way of, of getting land sellers, which is an amazing, amazing route, that's probably going to be your primary route for land sellers specifically, um, you're still going to need to sell them. And there's lots of amazing spots to sell the, the land online. There's farm and land. There's, you know, all those different sites. But one of the best ways to do it is try to build your own list. And so this right here, you know, Jeff Fassett, he's getting somewhere between, uh, you know, 50 and 100 leads a month of land, of land buyers. Um, and then over here, this guy here, Luke Harris, uh, Farm Finders. Let's sure. see. We, Luke went through our coaching program. Cool, dude. And so, yeah. so look at this right here. So 22,000 uh, land buyer leads that he's generated all for free. Um, a lot of it organic, but a lot of it too, just taking his postings on farm and land and all those, all those sites that he's posting on and then making sure that we're not just posting on those sites, but we're also driving people to our, your, your website. Uh, so people then can join your list. They can see the land you're building a real asset and you're building your, your lead generation machine off of your own site versus just using land and farm and stuff like that. So he's got 24,000 buyer leads in here. He's able to go back to the well each and every time he's looking to sell land in that piece of prop in that in that area to sell them really, really quick. And he's doing the same thing of uh, buying land with care as well. So it's just, just an, another vehicle. If you're just using direct mail and you don't want to add on getting sellers online, guys, for sure, build a, a system for uh, getting buyers online and building credibility uh, with those buyers. So they know, they know it's going to be a transaction that they can trust and that they're not going to get ripped off and just send money through the internet and not get, get a piece of land. Scott Todd, what do you think? I, I mean, I love it. I, think I it's, love uh, it. You, you got to be building your systems, right? Yeah. Um, well, Trevor, this is, that was an amazing, really quick uh, demo there. And if you're listening to this uh, in your car, um, I do recommend that you actually watch the video which will be on uh, thelandgeek.com forward slash YouTube and, and check it out and, and watch that, that demo there. Um, we'll have it on our website as well. But now, Trevor, we're at that point in the podcast and you're, you're, uh, you're coaching, your, your knowledge has been invaluable. But we're at that point, we're gonna ask you for one more tip of the week, another website resource, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Mm. What have you got? Dude, I, I, I think the biggest thing for me, I know this is, this is probably where my mind is right now. So that's why I'm giving the tip right here is um, <clears throat> if you guys don't have some sort of like a daily goal or habit tracker in place, I can promise you whether you're a one person shop or you're a 40 person team like we are, um, that it's gonna be an amazing, amazingly valuable asset for you to pull up every single day. And I'll give you guys a link, but to pull up every day, and go, you know, what are my top five items for the week I need to tackle? What are my top five priorities for the week? What are my top five priorities for the month? You do that at the start of the month. And what are my top five for the day? And um, I use this every single day, Mark. Uh, it's I have it shared with my assistant. And everyone can get it. No opt-in required, nothing. I'm not going to, like, get an opt-in from I just want people to use it. I just carrot.com forward slash habits. Uh, carrot.com forward slash habits. Get the habit tracker. And uh, start, to, start to get control of your habits, guys. No opt-in. Just go get it. I want to see you guys. Uh, gain back more of your time so you can guys win in business and life. Very cool. I'm downloading it right now. Sweet. Um, I, and then just shut it off so that Scott can't get it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, before we get to Scott Todd's tip of the week, I want to just rec recognize our sponsor for this week's podcast, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start mm -hmm. building that passive income machine quickly, safely, efficiently with someone helping you go up that mountain of land investing thousands of times. Scott Todd will be your Sherpa. He will take you from here in 16 weeks to doing deals guaranteed. We guarantee the tuition investment that you make in flight school ain't going to cost you nothing. You're going to make it back 180 days or less guaranteed. Just do the work and show us your work and it's done. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, you know, it talks about uh, messaging. And one of the things I saw on the websites that um, that we just looked at was there's a consistent messaging there, you know, the three steps that it takes or whatever. And I would just tell everybody that uh, they should probably, if they're looking to up their marketing game, they should get the book by Donald Miller, 
called building a story brand, clarifying your message so your customers will listen. And that's one of the tips that he lays out in there is just make it clear. Even if you're doing a landing page, just make the steps clear and life will be a lot easier. Dude, that, that book is amazing. I'll, I'll, I'll back that one up. Really good recommendation. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed that book uh, as well. So um, my tip of the week, of course, trumps all of your tips. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but it's carrot.com. And start learning and, and um, checking out all the, the resources and features and the blog, the webinar, all this information in one spot. Start building your lead generation systems. Take your marketing, your leads to the next level. Go to carrot.com and, and make sure it's, it's right for you. So, um, Trevor, are we good? We're, we're good, man. I, I appreciate the heck out of you guys, Mark and Scott. And, and I, I love what you guys are doing. You, you guys are, you guys are like the cream of the crop when it comes to the land investing side of things and any way that we can support you guys, just let me know. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them the only way, the only way we're going to the quality of guests like a Trevor mock from carrot.com is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less for free. So please do that. All right. We ready to do this one, two, three, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. <laughs> I love it. I, Not bad. I didn't prepare myself. Let freedom ring, y'all. I love it. All right. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks. Thank everybody. you, guys. Have a good one. All right.